Today, I'd like to talk about one of my favorite reasons for trading options, and it can be seen clearly here on this chart of the Kroger Company, who is a grocery store chain and one of the largest in the country. The stock started up here in the $36 area in the middle of December, and the entire industry started to sell off. So it sold off and then tried to rally in the January rally, and then it tried again here. And basically what you had was um, a high, a low, a lower high, a lower low, and then again a lower high, followed by the break. However, for the past four months, the stock has been going sideways, just trading in this area. Again, a low, a high, a higher low, a higher high, a nominally higher low, and then a move to a new high. The stock looked terrific right here in the $31 area. So you had really two choices. You could spend roughly a dollar and a half or two dollars for an option here at the market, 30 or $31 and you would have the uh, a risk of exactly what you paid for the option. Otherwise, you would have to take $3,000 or $1,500 on margin and trade the stock. What happened here was that Kroger, who beat on both the top and bottom lines, gave what the street thought was uh, really unimpressive and negative guidance for the coming quarter and the rest of the year. So here we have the stock closing at uh, 3028 and opening the following day on that news at 2660 and then trading all the way down to here to uh, 2437 and closing in this area at 2456. Well, that would have meant to you that if you bought the stock and uh, you didn't sell it during the day, at the maximum, you could have gotten about 27, 27 and a quarter. If you held it, you were down here at 24 and change. And the issue is that you really had no way of knowing a company if you did your homework and you thought that uh, the company was going to report up earnings and up revenues you would have been bullish and unfortunately you would have been wrong so we closed down here in the uh, 24 area and then the next day today what happens here is that amazon goes and buys whole foods that was great for Whole Foods, but it absolutely destroyed the entire rest of the sector. You had companies like Sprouts and Walmart, who was in the food business, and uh, Target, who was in the food business, and Costco, uh, and uh, a couple of others, all of which opened down and moved lower. So we're sitting here at 3.30 right now, and the stock is back to 22.06. In the meantime, your exposure from here, where you bought it at $30, turned out to be about $10, or 33%. On the other hand, if you would have paid a dollar and a half or $2 for an option in the stock for a month, you would have had a risk limited to just what you invested and you would have controlled 100 shares of the stock. So on the way down, it helped, it cut off your loss. Let's say that you think Kroger is going to come back, which you know it clearly can, and rally only halfway up from where it just came. So from 22 right here to, uh, let's just call it 27 or 28. Well, you could buy an option also for July right here, a 24 
for roughly 70 cents. Again, you would have only 70 cents per share of risk, so $70. And if the stock does what you expect it to do, and there's no more bad news, and it comes back up into here about halfway, that would be $25.91. Your 24 would be worth approximately $2 plus some time value. Rather than buying the stock at 22, continuing to have the risk and not using any leverage. So if you bought the stock at 22, 12, where it is right now, and it got to 27, you'd make $500. On the other hand, if you bought an option or multiple options right here at 70 cents, if the stock got back to 27, those options would be worth $300 a piece. You may think owning the stock earned you a little bit more money, but the fact of the matter is you're alleviating the risk that something else happens in this stock. It may or may not be very likely that the stock rallies back, but with 70 cents per share of risk, you are highly leveraged to a gain. Have a good weekend.